Welcome back to a new data cleaning tutorial. In this video, we are going to be talking about the PyGenter, which is a library that helps us clean data easily. It works really great with pandas and it's going to be useful for doing quick data cleaning operations. I'm going to be explaining how we can install it, how we can use it and when it's useful. Let's start coding. I'm in the VS code and I'm going to close this welcome page. You can use the encode editor that you want. I'm going to create a new file with the name PyGenter. And it's going to be a Jupyter Notebook file. And let's start to our tutorial. So PyGenter adds more functionality to Pandas. And if you are using the same data cleaning code again and again on Pandas, with PyGenter, you can just make them super easy. So for the starting of this tutorial, I'm going to be installing PyGenter. For that, you can open the terminal. And for Windows, you are going to write pip. If you are using Mac, you are going to say pip3 install and you will say pygenter. And when you press enter, you are going to have pygenter installed on your system. And let me show you my version that I'm using pygenter. I'm using the version 0.3.1.0. Okay, so here it is. Now I'm going to close the terminal and I'm going to start by importing pandas and importing NumPy for creating a data set. Normally I was going to take a data set from internet, but as I see in the comments, you want me to create the data on the video. So I prepared a code like this. Now we are going to create a data with first name, last name, age, salary, start date, department, employed and notes. So I'm going to make this run. Also, I'm going to say import warnings and warnings filter warnings ignore because i don't want to see any type of warning in this tutorial now i'm going to say data frame is going to be pandas data frame and i will pass data and then we can check data frame head so we have a data frame like this now great now we are going to talk about how gender works and how we can use that normally if you want to clean the column names what we need to do is Let's say that we are going to change the columns to snake case and we are going to remove the white spaces. So we need to do like data frame columns string strip for stripping white spaces. Then we need to say string lower string replace and we need to say the empty character like this. So we need to do that for the snake case if we want to clean the column names and here we got them in the snake case but with pygenter we don't need to do this like that all we need to do is data frame clean names but normally we don't have a function like this in pandas so it's going to raise an error like this let me show you but if we import genter that we installed as pygenter we don't need to do any chains now we can use them as data frame methods I'm going to make this run and we are going to see that we got our data frame with the column names that we wanted. So if we set this to our data frame like this, now we are going to have our data frame in this way. It's this easy. This compared to that clean names. And when we import the gender, we can use the methods directly on the data frames. So let's continue. Let's add a fully empty column for this. I will say empty column and it's going to be equal to the numpy.na. And now I'm going to call the data frame. Here we are going to see our NAs in here. And let's delete that. With gender, we can say data frame equals to data frame, remove empty. And after that, we are going to see that we are not going to have that column. This function here, remove empty, removes any rows or columns that are entirely NA. Like let's say that we have all NA on this one. This is not full NA, but think that in the first name we have NA, in the last name we have NA and more, then it's going to be removed with the remove empty. This happens often with messy data from spreadsheets or scraped tables. Man, let's say that we want to filter rows. Instead of writing complex boolean masks 
Filtrum lets us write filtering conditions in natural SQL-like syntax. So we will say data frame filter on and let's say like age greater than 30 and department equals to IT like this. And I'm going to add like this. Now, by the way, our age is like this. So we are going to add them and it's going to be correct. Now we are going to see that we are going to have our data frame filtered. I just refreshed my import warnings thing and we are not getting any depreciation warnings. Great. So we can use filter on like this. And let's say that we want to rename columns. So in Gentle, what we can do is we can say data frame. We will say data frame rename columns and we are going to pass a dictionary directly like what i want to change i want to change the age it's like this to let's say normally age and then what i want to do is i want to say employed to is employed and let's say like let's change the salary to salary it's like dollar sign at here to salary directly like this. Now I'm going to make this run and we are going to have the near column names like this. It's an alternative to pandas.rename, but you don't need to specify anything like columns or stuff like that. Also, I kept the age like this and salary like this for this example and with the rename columns we have the good column names right now so we have a function named row to names to set column headers so let's say from io import string io and let's create a data like i prepared it before like this in here and now I will say data frame headers and I'm going to simulate reading a message CSV like pandas read CSV. I will say string IO. I will pass data and header is going to be none like this. So let me call the data frame headers. Here we have this one. Now I'm going to set the row two as headers. So data frame headers, data frame headers where the gender comes in play is here row to names and row number is going to be two like this the index two and i will say remove row true now let's call the data frame headers again we can see that now we have the headers that we wanted in here that was shifted before great so this is a really, really useful one and saves a lot of code compared to the pandas. And let's talk about expanding grid with expand grid function Genter has. So let's create a data like I will say X and I'm going to pass one, two, three and I will pass Y. I will say one, two. And let's say that we want to create all combinations of X and Y. Then we can create something like data frame grid and we will say gender. This time we are going to directly use gender. Expand grid. And we will say others equals the data. Now we can check the data frame grid. Great. Here is all the combinations. Ones, twos, and threes. This one is great and useful for simulations, testing, or Cartesian products. And now I want to show you the conditional joins. So I created two data frames for this section and here they are data frame 1 and data frame 2 now we are going to use the conditional join like let's say result data frame 1 conditional join and it's a function from gender by the way I will say data frame 2 and we will pass like ID and ID is going to be joined if they are a cool Next, I'm going to say value one. Actually, we need to give this like that. And value one 
value to a and it's lowercase and the condition is going to be greater or equal and let's do one more value one and value to b and the condition is going to be less than or equal to and before i show you this the re result i'm going to say data frame one dot head and data frame two dot head and let's see our data frames and we have data frames like this and based on our conditions it's going to make a conditional join in here on the result and i'm going to call that right now here it is so since all the conditions met it made the conditional join like this but what if we change one thing like this now it's going to be like this one so this helps us combining data frames with the conditions that we want great and for our last example i'm going to use transform column for column wise transformation let's create a data frame like data frame transform and i'm going to say pandas data frame let's say values and i'm going to say minus one minus two minus three minus four and five and let's say six so we have a data frame like this actually like this and now what i'm going to do is i will say data frame transform this time is going to be equal to the data frame transform dot transform column and i will say values and then i'm going to say numpy dot absolute like this now i'm going to call the data frame transform and we are going to see that we have positive numbers in here it is like apply for a single column and it's pretty chainable great that was it for the coding part let's get to the outro thanks for watching my tutorial i have a playlist named data analysis tutorials where i have more than 40 videos just like this one you can reach that playlist from the cards of this video or from the links in the description also i'm sharing a new data science video every week on my channel you can subscribe for more videos like this have a great day